Hell gods have appeared. They visit people and banish their souls to hell. This cannot be undone, or can it? In this video, we will find multiple semi-serious ways on how to beat the hell gods in Hellbound. People have started to be visited by angels all over the world. Whenever an angel would appear, it would tell you the exact day and time when you will die. The series calls them angels, although to me they more appear like death angels or shinigamis. If the angel tells you that you are bound for hell, giant ape-like hell gods will chase you down and rip you apart after which they will toast you like a malfunctioned Chinese toaster. And of course, suck your soul out of your ashes. Here's what we know so far. A group of students are sitting inside a cafe and have a chat about a new cult that is called the New Truth. Religious fanatics that call out sinners and aim to purge the world of all evil, obviously having a slight Yagami complex. The cult leader currently explains how these angel visits and hell damnations are justified since it's the work of God. He sees nothing evil in it. Meanwhile, somewhere in the background, a middle-aged man, soaked in sweat, obviously anticipating something not very good, fixates the clock on his phone. This man is experiencing his last moments of life. When the clock strikes 1.20, a great rumbling announces the horror that is about to come. Interestingly enough though, it isn't just him who hears the sound, but everyone around him hears it too, indicating that those bound for hell are executed publicly and for everyone to see. The hell gods have arrived. After these beings broke into the cafe causing a lot of collateral damage, our guy runs for his life and is surprisingly able to more or less outrun them. They are powerful, but not very fast, right? So I suggest, until we figure out a better way on how to beat them, we better get ourselves a nice pair of Nike Freeze, enough compete blister patches, and never, ever skip leg day. Anyway, the first victim in this movie is not just banished to hell, but literally abused as a sort of human basketball. It's terrifying. Luckily enough though, he isn't killed before videos can go viral. Analyzing the footage of what is actually happening here is a good idea. You see, if I walk down my street and out of nowhere hairy hell gods arrive and make a scene, I would be prepared. I have dedicated a large part of my former life to weep culture. Therefore, I know what is happening and what isn't. But from the perspective of an ordinary citizen who has not explored the sophistication of waifus and other stuff that I am not yet comfortable sharing publicly, this would seem very unreal. No? <laughs> the point that I'm making is, for all we know, we know nothing at this point. The local police station thinks similarly. Here we meet an important character of the series. He's a policeman, a father of a teenage girl, and a husband of a murdered wife. His duty today is to find the cult leader and seek out information on what happened today. When our policemen arrive at the cult venue, we get a breakdown of today's events from the perspective of the cult which basically justifies the incident because the killed man was a sinner and therefore deserved his punishment. This guy, the cult leader, is a very lucid and eloquent speaker. He doesn't seem to have any malicious intent, yet seems to know more than he shares. But as far as we know at this point, he has encountered these hell gods many years ago already. By the age of 20, he traveled to Tibet, where he witnessed hell gods doing their casual thing. This experience changed his perspective on life so much that he became the man that he is today. Now, I don't know about y'all, but this sounds more like this dude was tripping balls in Tibet. Before we continue, a fantastic offer from our sponsor today. Surfshark is one of the leading VPN providers, allowing you to stay private when browsing the internet. Today, they offer a massive 83% discount and 4 months for free on top of that. I don't think there's a better deal out there right now. With Surfshark, you can unlock the biggest Netflix libraries around the world, like UK, Japan or the USA, quick and easy. But if you do need help with any of their services, they have a 24-7 customer support ready to help you whenever you need it. In my opinion, the greatest thing is that everyone in your household can take advantage of the same subscription. That's right, you can connect to Surfshark on unlimited devices at the very same time. Now, if that doesn't convince you, then there is also a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not happy with it, no problem, take back your money and no questions asked. Stop being the prey and become the shark with Surfshark. Click on our link in the description right now for the best deal and take back your privacy. With that said, thank you so much Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And now, let's go back to the movie. 
Anyway, at the same time, a mother comes home only to be surprised by her kids with a birthday cake and a lovely happy birthday song. How sweet. It's all fun and flowers until an angel appears and tells her that she will die and go to hell in five days. Okay. If I knew that I would be dragged down to hell in five days, I would visit every church, mosque, and synagogue within my vicinity. If there is a person out there able to help me, it's those that deal with that stuff on a daily basis. The New Truth cult from before is probably the best address to seek help from. But here's another take. During the attack from before, we could see that these ape-like monsters use portals to appear and disappear, meaning there is no way to hide yourself. The best solution that I can think of, given the information we have right now, is that if I don't find a way on how to escape hell within 5 days, perhaps finishing off myself instead is the best solution here. Here's the reasoning for that. I don't know if these monsters really work for God. For what it's worth, it could be anything else. Fact is, these apes before sucked out this poor man's soul after they have finished their business. Meaning if there is no soul left to damn because it has already transitioned to the afterlife, aren't you then able to escape hell or whatever the place is these beings send you to? It may work, but it may doesn't. But once they catch you, there is just one direction on how that goes, so... Anyway, the mother visits a lawyer who specializes in the New Age cult. You have to know that while the cult is looked at as something good, there is a subfraction of the cult called the Arrowheads. Those Arrowheads actively search for sinners and punish them themselves. They are what's called the Violent Lynch Mob. Now, the cult leader that we will get to meet every now and then clearly states that the Arrowheads have nothing to do with the actual doctrine of this New Age collective and distances himself from them. So, to break it down to avoid confusion, there are four fractions in this series. We got the New Age cult embracing the Hell Gods. We got the Arrowheads that also embrace the Hell Gods, but also call for citizens to lynch sinners. The police who are actively investigating these incidences. And this lawyer here who investigates on her own accord, but mainly against the Arrowheads and the New Age. She's clearly very skeptic um, and not in favor of these cults. And right now, she's taking on the case of this mother who was sentenced to hell in five days. So, the New Age cult offers a lot of money to the mother to broadcast her damnation life on TV. What appears to be a sick joke makes sense when we consider the goal of this cult. Creating a new world where people are too afraid to sin. And having ape-like monsters shred you to pieces and livestream that in 4K is a pretty good idea to go about that, not gonna lie. Now to win her over, they offer 3 billion won, which is roughly 3 million dollars. Now this money is a no-brainer, right? Even if you don't find a way to survive the upcoming the nation, 3 million dollars are enough for your children to live a good life after you're gone. It's also stated that even if the donation doesn't take place, the money is still wired. And the lawyer's job is nothing more than to make sure that all goes according to plan. Now before we get to Judgment Day, there are a few things happening in between that I think are important to take note of. Our policeman's daughter becomes more closely affiliated with the New Age cult and is manipulated by the leader himself into murdering the killer of her mother. They prey on him late at night, snatch him away and then burn him alive. Whatever that means at the moment, we don't know. We will find out later, but suffice to say, the cult leader isn't as innocent as he wants us to believe. In fact, leading a cult that aims for a sin-free world while killing another man is not unheard of, but it's weird, especially when you know that sinners in this new world are bound for hell. But before we continue that line of thought, let us have a look at how Judgment Day looks uh, for our mother. The TV stations have set themselves up, viewership is present, and even VIPs with front row seats are a thing. The police stands by with snipers and squads ready to intervene. But that's just not enough, is it? I mean, can you imagine the world if that would be a true event? There is no way the military wouldn't be there. In fact, multiple nations would work together and try to find a way to either capture these beings or at least get a probe to find out what they are and where they came from. For now though, our mother's last moment is about to happen. When the clock strikes 3pm, the rumbling atones one more time. Now as to three apes that, when thinking about it, really look like three Chewbacca's that switch to the dark side, do their thing, nobody does anything. I mean, this poor woman is completely on her own. The viewers are basically throwing up, the policemen are just shocked and do nothing, and our poor victim is, well, shred to pieces. 
Now, this whole spectacle was a complete waste of time. It could and should have been used to gather data and find out what is actually going on. I mean, these three apes always appear near the person bound for hell, right? Meaning, if we use that person as a sort of bait inside a special facility, we could maybe trap them. Uh, maybe not, but having them appear in a designated area where scientists, occultists and other experts analyze the actual happenings seems like a better idea than what just happened. Not to speak of the damage it can be prevented. I would also try to encapsulate the victim in a transparent cube of indestructible glass or something. I mean, everything at this point is worth trying out, especially to discover to what limits these beings can actually go. For what it's worth, the three Chewbaccas could be aliens coming from another dimension. Right? Maybe it's a prank show on their TV. Maybe it's just Twitch streamers from another dimension looking for the next big thing. We just don't know. I mean, that these beings are doing the job of God is just a man-made narrative to explain the unknown. Because if there is one thing humans don't like, it is the unknown. After this incident, the new age cult grows massively in power. This public demonstration was a terrible idea. The greatest threat now is the cult and not even the apes themselves. You see, the huge new following becomes more violent by the minute. Everyone who isn't part of them is viewed as the enemy and must be purged. Now, this leads to multiple happenings simultaneously. Let me break it down real quick. You see, the lawyer and everyone involved with her is targeted for going against God's will, as they say. She therefore books a flight to Canada and tries to escape with her mom. However, she has received an anonymous document that reveals a huge truth, right? Namely, the cult leader has received a death sentence himself 20 years ago. And the only other person knowing that is a pastor that she's about to visit. But before going there, she tries to contact a policeman by visiting the station. But this has already been overrun by those crazy arrowheads. Now, she realizes that her safety is in grave danger and tries to get back to her car as quick as she can. But the lynch mob has already arrived. Her mom and she are beaten up, leading to her mom's death, and she's seriously wounded. Meanwhile, a similar tragedy hits our policeman too. He has found out that his daughter was behind the murder of his wife's killer and is searching for her. And knowing that the cult leader is responsible for that, he looks for him instead. But the countless sheep aren't making it easy, right? Now, eventually, two major things happen. The cult leader calls him for a meeting to an abandoned building and the lawyer is looking for the pastor that has interviewed the cult leader 20 years ago. Unfortunately, both are traps. When she visits, it is revealed that the hell prophecy of the cult leader will happen today. Not only that, but it's also making the pastor the new leader of the new age group. Realizing that this is obviously a trap, she tries to escape but is caught by an arrowhead fraction and seemingly beaten to death. Meanwhile, the policeman finds the leader and tries to reveal the truth for himself. He finds out that his death sentence will strike in a few minutes, of which he did not know anything before. It is also stated that the leader has received his prophecy despite the absence of any sins. Now, of course, he has sinned many times throughout this series, but at the time when he received the prophecy, before that, he never sinned, at least according to him. Right? He says that he has never done anything prior to his sentence, he has never lied, he has never used violence, and yet he still is bound for hell. How is that possible? Well, there are a few possible options, right? We hinted at them before. Namely, that it's not God's work at all, or just a random alien calamity. Most importantly though at this point is that this cult is completely based on lies. This man needed to make sense of his hell sentence, but couldn't. And since he couldn't find any reason for that, he created one himself. That's how pretty much every cult starts. Here comes the problem. If the policeman decides to film the punishment, the cult would disappear, right? And the world could return to normality. Because if the leader himself is publicly bound for hell, then on what was the cult built to begin with? New Age just couldn't sustain anymore. But that also means that he would need to arrest his own daughter for killing his wife's murderer. Which, knowing what we know now, was the plan of this leader to begin with. Which was kind of genius, okay? Sneaky but genius. Anyway, what would you do? Sacrifice your daughter for the greater good or save her instead of the world? A tough decision, but safe to say that saving one's daughter is probably the thing most would do. Although, to make sure, I would still film his punishment just in case, you know? I mean, it's always good to have some jokers left to play. 
Now all of this though reminds me of Death Note, no? But instead of the perspective of the Death Note holder, it's from the perspective of Kira's followers. They usually oversimplify what is going on and create a cult based on what they see. Exactly that also happened in Death Note, right? The only thing difficult to explain are these ape-like monsters and the light that appears once they have finished torching their victims. Anyway, as of now, four years have passed and the cult has grown into a massive movement dictating the moral conduct of society. Not to speak of the giant money grab they have established. All new hellbound people are captured and their execution openly broadcasted. These displays help the cult to maintain their power and control the population through fear. Everyone who is against them, or even just a family member of somebody who's hellbound, will be lynched and shamed. If you think about it, that's what hell is, right? Which I guess is the irony here. Now in the second half of the series, we follow a TV producer who has just become a father. While he's at work, his wife is resting at the hospital. The birth she gave was premature and the baby has to be taken care of for some extra time. However, the unthinkable happens. The baby is visited by an angel and sentenced to hell in three days. How is that possible, right? According to the cult, just sinners can be bound for hell. How is a baby able to sin? I guess that is a key moment in this series. But before he can visit her at the hospital and learn the truth himself, because right now he doesn't know, he has to search for his co-worker who just disappeared. Eventually, he finds him at the local lake and finds out that he is bound for hell shortly. And not to burden his family, he sought a secluded place to die in peace. Here's a tip from my side though. If you are bound for hell, I suggest you don't spend your last moments near a water source. Unless, of course, you prefer to be drowned other than shred to pieces, which I guess is not, a, is not an easy choice to make. But um, it makes me conclude that you have some power over your last moment. These Chewbaccas react instinctively. They don't seem to care about in what state you are. All they want is to kill you. Meaning if you really hate a person and you really want to dedicate your last moments to make that person's life a bit worse, visit him or her just before your sentence strikes. There you go. You could also get stupid high to make this a bit more fun. I wouldn't recommend LSD though, but DMT may help you switch to another dimension just in time. Maybe that's the key to escape, I don't know. In any way, instead of being drowned or shred to pieces or whatever, I would at least opt for an anesthetic and just sleep through my last moments. Seems to be the most comfortable way. Now, I've said before that finishing off yourself before your judgment day could prevent you going to hell. But earlier in this episode, it was revealed that other people have tried exactly that. It didn't work. They were brought back from the dead and, well, killed again. Which is weird, but it implies that these Chewbacca seem to have at least some connection to the afterlife. But anyway, after the co-worker has turned into human charcoal, a secret organization appears and cleans the area of any remnants. Now this is a new fraction that is by the way led by the former lawyer that we thought was killed before. What they do is they support the victims before they are captured by the cult, basically helping them to go on while protecting their families. But before our character can find out what is actually happening, he is made unconscious and dropped off somewhere far away. When he wakes up, he goes to the hospital where his wife tells him about the prophecy their baby has received, which is just the next shocker basically. This triggers a cascade of events. Knowing about the organization from last night, he decides to visit them for help. To make it short, they propose to broadcast the baby's death to reveal that the cult is full of and based on lies. They think showing the world a sentenced baby would show that God can't be involved in these things and that we should, you know, rethink and go back to how things were. It supports the fact that these hell prophecies are nothing more than a novel natural phenomena that once again people tried making sense of and ended up in superstition and religion. It's like what looking at the Milky Way was 2000 years ago, or thunders, or rain. To explain these phenomena, people came up with crazy legends and myths. Until, of course, we have discovered what they really are. And, at least in my opinion, these hell prophecies seem to be similar, right? We just haven't discovered what they really mean or where they come from. The only weird thing is that these appearing angels phrase the prophecy as hell prophecies. But hell is a man-made construct. So that doesn't make much sense unless we think that these events are created by humans themselves. 
I guess we'll find out. But the most important decision to make right now is what happens to the baby. If the cult gets it, they will cover up the fact that a sin-free baby was born and bound for hell, which would reinforce their power. And if the secret organization would broadcast the baby's death, people could understand that the cult is just using an unexplainable phenomena to brainwash people and gain control. If that sounds familiar, well that's because it is. Anyway, the mother thinks it would be a great idea to consult with the cult, which is idiotic obviously. Now the husband doesn't know any of that, because he's the husband. Suspecting that something is going on though, he contacts her and realizes that she's already on her way there. He then rushes over with the lawyer and tries to stop the cult from getting the baby. To make the long story short, they are able to get the baby back, hide themselves in a secret spot and wait until the punishment takes place. There is a bit more happening, but we don't care about that, do we? What we care about are three shadowy Chewbaccas that hunt down the baby. As our hairy friends arrive and savagely burst forward to grill the newborn and devour its soul, I can't think of anything else but using a high power vacuum to suck them in. I mean, they look pretty ghostly and stuff. Not sure if a Dyson would work, but I got one recently. They suck pretty hard, in a good way. I guess it's worth a shot, that's what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, through parental love and sacrifice, the baby can be saved. Although, both parents must die. May I introduce you to the boy who lived, V2. And if you think that that was it, no, it wasn't. Because this series ends with a massive cliffhanger. That's right, the first victim that was publicly broadcasted is back. Yeah, like a zombie phoenix. Whatever that means, I don't know. But it would seem like she's truly back. Now, depending on how normal she is, we can conclude a couple scenarios. If she's brain dead and looks at you with eyes that kids at the back row have when staring at their math exam, then probably it means that it was not a good place. If her eyes glow red and she possesses superhuman powers, it means that she just switched sides. And if she's lucid and kind of uh, normal, that means we will finally get to know what the hell was going on in hell. <laughs> in season 2. Yeah, that's right. I hope you loved this video. But I wish you a wonderful rest of your day or night. Take care of yourselves. Catch you guys again. Peace out.